Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. These are the packets which arrived over Christmas and in January, with the exception of this one. This one arrived uh, quite a long time ago, but I used one of these in one of my videos and then a few subscribers asked where I did get them and uh, how they work. So I thought I included here in the mailbag, even if they did not arrive recently. These are very neat push buttons. You just normal push buttons. They can be mounted on uh, PCBs, but they have something very special. They do not only have four pins like normal uh, s button switches, they have six and this is because they have an LED in it in different colors. The LED is not connected to the switch so you are free to switch the LED on or off with your microprocessor. On the other side of course it needs uh, an, an additional pin and these are just bare LEDs so you have to use also a current limiting resistor for them depending on the color of the LED. To, just to show you how they work I connected 2.3 volt to these crocodiles and you see here it's just a normal LED and the interesting thing is they have a they have a red point here, but this is not what you would expect. The plus, no, it's the minus. This is the white one. It needs 2.6 volt to light up. You get them in these colors. Orange, blue, red, white and green. And they do not cost a fortune. You find the link uh, below in the comment. If you remember, I used this orange one on my last small project with the Wemos shields. And you see here it blinks just as an indicator that the device is on. But now we start with the first packet. These are a few of these breadboards because I always have projects in parallel. I do not want to rip everything off when I switch my priorities. And uh, viewers or frequent viewers know that I have a few projects now on hold because always newer and more interesting projects came. So I run out of these kind of breadboards. Usually I have uh, two in parallel then I, I get a, a decent size of uh, to, to, to my experiments or my projects. Together with these power supplies they are a perfect fit for projects. Next one. This is a Lolin breadboard and uh, you can use it, uh, this is the same as this one, I just wanted to have a second one and this, the Lolin breadboards fit perfectly here and these are, for me this is the main development platform because they sit very neatly on, uh, on, on, the, on the table and can be connected to whatever the LEDs or whatever you need, sensors and stuff like that. I bought some felt because here these um, pins are quite sharp and they might destroy uh, the table and I will cut it now with my left hand scissor and what is the difference between a left hand scissor and a right hand scissor one is it's nicer to grip here because they do some they have something different but more important is they changed also here the shape and 
with this one you never see where you cut because you cut from below basically you see you never see where you cut and with the left hander you see because it cuts from the top I didn't know that the difference but I know that uh, many of my viewers for sure are left handers so that fits nicely now I'm sure you ask yourself how I peel off this with my nice white gloves but also here there is a trick my famous Heiko tweezers and now it's simple now it's much much nicer next one this should be AP2112 3.3 voltage regulators and uh, they are used I think for the hazard board and uh, they go into the test of the different voltage regulator later on this year in a comparison video it is an isolated USB connector and it should have no connection between and here and here so here and here and really no connection this USB isolator uses an ADUM3160 from analog devices and this is a full speed 2.5 kilovolt USB isolator if you look at the diagram it has inputs and outputs on both sides and it has a complete electrical isolation between the two parts why do we use these kind of USB connectors if we want to measure things which are not grounded and we want to avoid ground loops then this should be a solution next one these are nice connectors here and they are quite special why because they have four different contacts here and they are especially for this Sonoff devices because they use four different at least uh, as I know they need four different connections I think they only use three of them but you can if you do it right you can connect a fourth one and then you can connect the sensor or something else so I have a few of them to build my own sensors maybe in a future project next one professional soldering iron ah yes this is a tip of one of my viewers he said I should try once a USB soldering iron because uh, if you remember I did also a soldering iron test and there I did not test one of these USB soldering irons but so let's quickly check so I have here a quite a strong USB power supply and I'm of course in, and I get a nice stand here so that's nice here and we connect and it takes 1.5 amps maybe you see it here I'm not sure 1.5 amps 7.3 watts and they even provided a little bit solder so let's try hey <laughs> it works and it's quite fast it should have 8 watts 
and here it's 7.5 watt which is okay it's a real nice thing and uh, I read from my viewers that uh, they are not too bad for small things uh, on, on your journey this might be a simple thing and the price is really cheap and it's really it's I don't believe it but it works so thumbs up next one a very special part I think What the hell is this? What do you think? It is a SDS-011, I think. There is no mark here, but I think I ordered an SDS-011. And this is a super dust sensor. And it can measure the smallest amount of dust. If you remember, the Son of SC had also a dust sensor built in. This dust sensor is a Sharp GP2Y1010, and here we have our SDS-011. So what are the differences between the two? Both measure dust sensitivity, and the Sharp measuring unit is milligram per cubic meter, and the one here is microgram per cubic meter but if we look we have 0 0.8 and somewhere here it would be one milligram per cubic meter and if we look here we have also one milligram per cubic meter so the ranges are somehow similar but there is a difference here we have clearly parameters PM 2.5 and PM 10 and here we have no indication on this. What does this PM2.5 and PM10 mean? It is the size of the particles measured. PM2.5 are very very small particles which uh, enter directly into, into your lung and so on. They seem to be quite dangerous. PM10 are bigger particles which have also its danger. I'm not a specialist in this but obviously it is important to measure both values if you want to get an indicator for your air quality. And here we do not know which size of particles are measured. So this is probably more something for the home and this is more something for the academic usage if you want to have really precise things. You have also to know that this one is a few dollars and this one is more than $20 uh, on, on AliExpress so it's also a quite a, a difference in price. It has also a fan here which really sucks in the, the air here and stuff like that so it's a quite an elaborated sensor. Next one This is an LED tester. I saw this somewhere, I don't remember where, and I thought this is a nice addition to my lab. But let's quickly check out. I still have plenty of 9 volt batteries from my video where I powered my oscilloscope, or at least tried to power my oscilloscope with only a few of these. Um, 9 volt batteries. The oscilloscope did not work but uh, the wave generator did work. And we have uh, our nice LED assortment. So let's just check one. It works. This should be 2 milliampere and this is 30 milliampere. Yeah. Maybe I can put in a second one. I don't know. And then we could compare. I hope you see it. At least for me it's quite clear. It's very bright. Why I wanted this? This is because I wanted to have a fast way to decide how much current 
I want to send through my diode and of course I can decide on the on the brightness I want and then basically I know which milliampere I need and then I can calculate the, the resistor this is why I wanted this device I tried this LED tester a little and uh, it after it killed two of my nice diodes you see here the black spot on the other side there is no black spot and it smelled a little bit and then I thought this cannot be and this is why I disassembled the whole thing and wanted to know what happens now the upper row was no problem and you see already here you just have here different values of resistors so basically you have one row is connected to ground and the other row is connected via a resistor to 9 volt so this is this is okay the design now it's completely different on the lower side if you look at the lower side you have a strange behavior you have everything connected to ground here but here you do not have a connection to ground it's differently and you have also connected some of the pins and others are not connected the idea is if you look at the signs here this is cathode anode cathode at, and anode cathode anode and we have such the such LEDs here they are called common cathode or common anode and I have some of them some are common anode like this one here and this one here is a common cathode you don't see a big difference maybe in the inside you see a difference but here you have minus in common and you have to have plus here and here you have plus in common and you have to have ground here and here and the idea here is really ex exactly as it shows here two diodes and in either direction so one would be this one and the other one would be this one but if we look at the wiring schematic here it has nothing to do with that and in addition here is a zero ohm resistor and if you put the diode the right in the right direction you get 9 volt and one and a half ampere just across this poor LED I have to admit I tried it twice because the first time I did not believe it and looking at the diagram here it's up it's obviously a wrong design so don't use the bottom one the top one is okay but the bottom one does not work and I fixed the problem in my way just covered this so I still have the working pins here and for two dollars it's still okay next one this is a sample book guys who watch my videos frequently know that I have also other sample books here it's for example SMT resistors and here I found one which has transistors F FET transistors and also some diodes and even a TL431 and I purchased a few of these and I hope I can fill it with my own stuff and then basically name it like that so this would be a nice addition at least for parts of my SMD parts next one these are small tilt switches they are really inexpensive that's why I got a lot 
And now we can use nearly everything we saw before to test this vibration switch here. And now we can use this one here as a current source. Now I take a, a green LED. Let's check if it works. Yes, quite bright. And now I just connect one pin. The other pin I connect here. And now I have the vibration, the vibration sensor of before. I have between the two here. And now it does not light up. And if I vibrate, you see here, the more the vibration, the more the LED lights up. So the vibration sensor works. So we were able to use all we had before, including this nice soldering iron. Next one. This is a current sensor and it senses current. Then we should be able to measure, I think, voltage. Oh, yeah, it's for 10 amps, it's one volt. And uh, this is for quite high currents and it can be used, for example, for solar panels or others where you have less than 10 amps. And it is basically the same principle as these meters here, where you can open also the, the ring. And just you have to have a, a cable through this, and then you can measure current. I have to play around with this once in another video, I think. I anyway plan, I still have my plans for a high current sensing video. So far it was a little bit below in the in the priority but this is one which will be covered for sure will be covered there next one and this is a LoRa and GPS sensor actually not a LoRa sensor, it's a LoRa module. It's a Hope uh, RFM95, I assume, and a GPS sensor. And the whole thing is for a, a Raspberry Pi. So, ah, this is also a Dragino. And I hope I can use this uh, for a gateway with only one channel. Maybe we will make it possible because this one is only $30 and the concentrator with eight channels was uh, $250 or something. So with a Raspberry uh, Zero we could really create a quite a cheap gateway. And this uh, could be a perfect start for guys who just want to play around with LoRa. But I'm not completely sure if I will manage it, but this is the plan here. So stay tuned. Next one. This is a module for solar panels. I plan when it is warmer and has more sun in this area of the world to do some tests with solar power. And uh, this one was advertised as an MPT charger and an MPT charger does some adjustments uh, basically to get always most capacity out of a solar panel. And I really wonder if this is the case. At least it has a beefy something on it. Ah, seems to be a regulator XL4015. For sure, you will see this in a later video. 
next one. I think I have to go to the microscope to understand what's in here. It has three pins. They are some MCP1700 power regulators, 3.3 volt LDOs. And this is an addition to the other LDOs I have and one of the videos will be a comparison of these LDOs. So this was the last one. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye! If true, then like.